Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at a from Red Dragon. Red Dragon, many of us may know as the uh, gaming company that came out primarily with mice and keyboards, but they have been improving on their designs, not necessarily coming out of gaming, but trying to create what I say is trying to bridge the gap between gaming and enthusiast. So today we're taking a look at their K. 617 fizz um which is, is a 60 percent kit now they did send this over to me for for me to review but obviously all of my opinions are my own um i have had fun with a couple of the other newer um series the newer red dragons do they no longer use the uh otemu style or milmax style hot swap sockets and they are now all five pin compatibles they're basically similar to kale or gainer on hot swap sockets but so they've definitely stepped up their game when it comes to that so let's go ahead and take a look at what we get out of the box all right keyboards come backwards but that's okay all right so we got the keyboard but let's set that aside for the minute and see what we've got in here all right we've got a few spare red switches that's what's in here we have a, a decent USB-C cable, um, USB-A to USB-C. It's just the nylon covering, but it does have the elbow, so I'm assuming, yeah, the connector is on the side. Now, they're still putting in plastic keycap pullers. Please stop. I'd rather you not include them. I mean, I don't need them. I don't use them. All they're doing is going straight to the trash pile. So, I mean, a switch, a switch puller, that's nice, but these keycap pullers they're they're going to scratch your keycaps if done incorrectly so all right so that's what we've got out of the box all right so with the keyboard we've got your uh little user manual or quick start guide kind of several pages that open up uh it just tells you the function keys obviously how to get to the function keys how to do the left uh, the arrows are over here and it actually does have the sub legends um, you have to use use function to use the arrow keys and it also yeah backlight settings how to change them and faq and an actual fcc statement and as always red dragons include one of their stickers so now looking out of the box i i gotta say i do like the colors i like uh fatter bezels on keyboards uh, I, I like no bezels on my smartphone but i like bezel on keyboards go figure anyway it's actually like a two-tone so you've got the white on the inside and the gray on the outside which is pretty cool in my opinion because especially it matches up with the um with the the colorway of the keycaps now taking a look at these oh, i use a keycap board and these appear to be OEM profile keycaps. Yeah, those are definitely OEM. So we've got some uh, fairly thin keycaps. I'm going to say they're about seven tenths of a millimeter. If if I, I were to be a guessing man. Seven tenths of a millimeter. So anything for me personally, um, if it's below one millimeter, I, um, I, I don't want to use them because they're going to sound clacky. Despite anything I might do to the keyboard, uh, every little piece counts, but the, the, the switch is going to make a huge impact on that final sound. And the fact is these are so thin um, now they do have the double shot, but as you notice, the double shot only covers like the bottom half so that it goes through for the, the clear, for the shine through. But I can easily grab this key and bend it with my thumb. And I have weak hands because of a condition that I have. So the fact that I can bend it, 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 it this just doesn't bear well. But let's see what we've got here. got the 
red drag and red switches. Now, oh, I was under the wrong impression. I have, uh, I, I was mistaken, I must say. Um, I thought that the new K-Series did use uh, the new style hot swap sockets because, I mean, both the I have the K631 and the K631 Pro. So, um, well, it kind of changes my opinion on this board already. Uh, I, uh, I mean, I can get a 60% EUSU board on sale for $8.99 and it still has those. Uh, so, I know that this one's a little bit pricier than that. So, I can't say that... Uh, oh, I, I, I can say I'm honestly disappointed. Not only that, the RGB LED sticks up above. So, even if you had a decent skinny switch, which I don't think you do without the SMD windows, um, your choices of switches become quite limited. Now, here I have a, a Kiwi and A-Jazz, so that, that should fit in there. All right, yeah. So, I mean, there are some switches that you can use, but if I go and pull out... All right, so even these uh, GMK0G, they actually look like they have the skinny leg. So if I were to go ahead and say permanently mar these by taking off those extra pins so they're no longer PCB mountable, only plate mountable. But as you see, there is no window for an LED in there. So despite the fact that this might actually go into the hole, into the sockets, it doesn't go over. I mean, I don't know. It's hard to tell, but it's not in all the way. It's just, yep. See? So, despite the legs being sh being skinny enough to fit inside of it, uh, you're not going to be able to use the switch unless it has the SMD window, or you want to sit there with a soldering iron and make a window <laughs> for all of your switches. Um, so. I, I'm honestly surprised. Like I said, Red Dragon was like, hey, would you like to take a look at the 617 Fizz? And I just assumed because they had sent me the 631 Pro that it was just the updated version of, uh, of the ones they're doing. But they must have some old inventory they're trying to get rid of. So I'm not sure. But in this case, uh, I hate to say this, but this keyboard's obsolete. I mean, it limits you as to what switches you can use. And even when the switches, the legs work, if you don't have an SMD window, then you're SOL. So, I mean, I, I just, I, I could not recommend this board um, nowadays. I mean, especially at any price point above 15 bucks or so. I just... I just don't think that it's, I mean, it's extremely light. This is a quarter of a kilo, 250, 300 grams, perhaps. Um, it's, I mean, it doesn't sound awful, but. But if you're going to want to um, upgrade it, which most people are, because that's kind of you know, the whole point of being an enthusiast, um, you're still going to be limited as to what switches you can use. Hmm. Well, it just took a while to come on. Now, it does have some really bright RGB, I can tell you that. Oh, messed up recording, because I got it plugged in, but. So, despite the fact that I like the looks of this keyboard, I really do. I think it has a unique style um, because of that bezel, that two-tone bezel. I just can't... I mean, it's obsolete. It's just not a... Uh, 
I mean, for somebody getting into the hobby, I know I I was not well informed about hot swap sockets when I first got into the hobby, and I didn't know. I didn't know that there was, I mean, I figured a hot swap socket is a hot swap socket for MX style, you know, cherry switch, you know, not for Alps, not for Alps, look for, so long story short, I mean, I, I sent back those switches, but I learned that there was, you know, some switches that would work in these cheaper boards because I thought I'd find a gold mine. Hey, man, I could put any switches in here. So I learned to work with what I had. And I worked for a while with the cheaper switches and, you know, made sure to get the switches with the skin in your leg so that I could, you know, load, load up by a 10 moves. And a lot of the Akos work, but some don't. A lot of Gatorons can make work, but most of them really don't work. Uh, so it was just a big pain in the butt moving towards this new availability for three and five pin switches that is a good thing um leaving it like this uh i mean i gotta just assume that they're trying to to move some stock and uh good luck to them but unfortunately uh 15 maybe 20 you know because there are still some switches out there that'll work you know, and, and something can be done, but at $45, when I got this one for $21, um, and for all intents and purposes, it is an RK61 clone, um, and the even the RK61 goes for, I want to say $44.99, the same price, but obviously they have three and five pin compatibility, this only has three pin, and it's only going to work with certain switches, so again, um, I, I'm just of the opinion that they're trying to get rid of stock. I'm, uh, <sighs> I'm, I'm disappointed. I thought this was going to be one of the ones that I could put any switches in. I was actually going to do some sound tests. I, I've got three different sets of switches loaded up, and I was going to do sound tests with a stock. Then I was going to lube the sta stabilizers, but just lube them in place, switch out, try a different set of switches, and then uh, with the stock key caps, and then a different set of switches with a different set of caps as well. That's what I, I mean, I had a nice planned out video for that, but two of the, the, the switches I picked out aren't gonna work with this, so it, it, I, it's just pointless. So, um, and I, I don't think I have enough of the uh, skinny legged ones to actually load up even a 60% at this point that aren't already being used in one of my Atomu uh, styles hot swap kits. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a sound test for this. Um, until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on. <laughs>